So guys, on the wires, vibrometer known as the low frequency transducer and the accelerometer on the other hand, you know, is known as the higher frequency transducer. Why is this so-called differential, guys, I mean, in, the, in the frequency, guys, and you know, all happens to take play, takes place, guys, in the vibrometer and in the uh, accelerometer. So the vibrometer has got a lower frequency and the accelerometer, on the other hand, you know, has got a higher frequency. So, in order to know more about it, guys, and you know, let us, uh, as in fact, revisit our old videos. By the way, in case if you still have not subscribed to my channel, guys, and you know, please do, please do it, you know, with, uh, without any further delay and stuff, you know, and you know, which is obviously, you know, going to inspire and motivate me more, guys, in order to make all these videos and, you know, pronounce these things to you. So, guys, you know, as I've already, you know, told you, guys, that when it comes about the differential of the frequency, guys, you know, while we get to deal with the vibrometer and accelerometer, the reason why, you know, it actually, you know, takes place is, guys, that, uh, the the radiation and frequency guys when it takes place because of some uh, it takes place because of some uh, really fundamental reasons guys such as uh, the lower frequency guys you know, is present in vibrometer guys you know, because vibrometer you know, happens to have that so called capability guys you know, to measure uh, the displacement the acceleration and the velocity guys you know, in a so called vibrating uh, vibrating element or rather than vibrating uh, eventuality. So, guys, you know, because of this so-called limitation, guys, you know, I mean that uh, frequency, uh, the frequency, you know, really matters, guys, you know, uh, when it comes about it. And, uh, guys, you know, on the other hand, you know, while you get to go to deal with accelerometer, guys, the accelerometer, guys, and what it really measures is the uh, element of acceleration, guys, or rather the potential of acceleration, guys, you know, I mean, present in that system. So, guys, you know, the reason, you know, why the accelerometer, you know, measures so much, guys, measures the potential of acceleration guys you know this is why guys you know the accelerator guys you know, has got an uh, higher frequency potential guys because guys the uh, degree of often uh, the the degree of its often times or rather the often degree or rather uh, the degree of its oftenly occurrence guys you know, seems to seems to be mattering guys at an initial stage also and guys the, the reason behind that is guys that uh, obviously, uh, when, it, when, it, when we get to deal with accelerometer, guys, it occurs more frequently, guys, you know, than the vibrometer. And basically, as you all uh, very well know, guys, that the vibrometer and accelerometer, guys, and we both happen to you know, fall in the same sort of categorization, guys, of the transducers. But, guys, you know, these are the two different kind of, kinds of types, guys, of the seismometer, or rather, you know, which have got uh, different orientation. But why is that? Guys, you know, the reason behind that is, guys, you know, while we get to deal with the seismometric orientation of these two different transducers, the reason, you know, why it happens to be such is, guys, because vibration, vibrometer, guys, you know, happens to, happens to be uh, on a scale, guys, and more capable, guys, you know, to de more capable to determine the, uh, determine the measure of uh, the actual vibrational, uh, vibrational factors, you know, taking place, guys, you know, in a so-called element. And the accelerometer, guys, on the other hand, you know, on the other hand, you know, can very well determine, uh, can very well determine only the acceleration potential, guys, you know, in a so-called equipment, in a so-called system, guys, you know, which is, uh, which is in fact, you know, the vibrating. And uh, as I've already told you, guys, that the vibrometer, that the vibrometer, the accelerometer, even the seismometer, even the signal transducer, even the so-called. Um, uh, so-called tachometer, guys, and as we have even uh, studied about tachometer, guys, you know, in our previous videos, you know, it happens to be really essential, guys, and while we get to deal with this so-called uh, study on vibration analytics. So, guys, you know, this, uh, this was about the orientation of that so-called tachometer. Uh, guys, you know, these, uh, the, this tachometer, guys, you know, happens to have two different types, guys, you know, and which, you know, it seems to be the Fram tachometer and the Fullerton tachometer. But guys, the Fullerton tachometer, guys, you know, happens to be based on a single read, guys, on uh, on one hand, and the Fram tachometer, guys, you know, happens to be based on multiple reads. But guys, you know, there, there seems to be a, a classification, guys, you know, based on the reads, guys, you know, I mean, while we get a, a subdivide or rather perform a demarcation between the uh, demarcation between the Fram tachometer or rather the uh, Fullerton tachometer. Now, guys, you know, this so-called demarcation, you know, happens to be absolutely crucial for us, you know, I mean, to study, uh, study more about, uh, 
its orientation about the actual work and how it performs. And the other thing, you know, which I gotta say, or rather tell you guys, is that uh, the fuel rate tachometer, guys, you know, is uh, why is used on a wider scale, guys, you know, as in comparison, you know, I mean, with that so-called Fram tachometer. Fram tachometer is just, you know, I mean, uh, confined, guys, you know, to laboratory use because, guys, you know, fuel rate tachometer is in fact, you know, used for the pro for the purpose of uh, that beam analysis or that. Uh, oscillatory motion guys you know in the beams guys you know, which is in fact found found while the musical strings or rather the musical harmonics guys are, are in fact you know are generated guys you know, because of that so-called vibratory oscillation guys you know, present in that so-called wave or uh, i'm sorry that so-called prism guys you know, which happens to be in that shape of that u and the other thing you know which i gotta tell you is guys that uh now obviously, you know, we have learned a lot, guys, about the aero, uh, aerospace, uh, aerospace elasticity, or rather the aero elasticity, guys, you know, you know, but which is basically uh, the subject, or rather the conceptualization of the, uh, which is basically the subject of the vibrational theory and aero elasticity, the VTA, you know, which happens to, happens to fall under our uh, academic study curricula, curriculum, guys, in the, uh, uh, for the Department of Aerospace Engineering. And on, which is for why, guys, and for your ease and for your more convenience, you know, when I'm making all these great and amazing and really informative videos for you, guys, you know, so just uh, to, you know, provide some key vision points and key uh, insiders, guys, and you know, for you to, you know, and uh, for you to enrich your knowledge, basically. And as I've already told you, guys, you know, that the seismometric, what you, seismometric orientation, guys, and what happens to be an essential criterion, guys, and you know, for uh, basically demarcating two different typicalities of transducers, guys. So, guys, you know, two different typicalities of a transducer, guys, are basically studied by the analysis of the the orientation of the seismometric uh, uh, orientation of the seismometer, or rather the seismometric orientation, guys, of it. A number which happens to say that, guys, uh, that the vibrometer, you know, fall, falls in one certain categorization. And the accelerometer, you know, happens to you know fall in the another categorization. Now, guys, you know, this both, you know, seem to be signal transducers only. You know, both of these guys you know, have got that uh, so-called principle or that so-called phenomenon of transduction of uh, transduction of energy or transducing of energy, or rather conversion of energy, you know, from one form into another, you know, which is the, which is in fact the wider definition of transducer or transduction. So guys, you know, this was about the seismometric orientation of those, uh, seismometric orientation of those things, uh, about that transducer, and uh, obviously, guys, while we get uh, learn, learn about vibration measuring instruments, guys, and we got to study about the tachometers, you know, which we know, guys, as the Fram tachometer, and even the Fullerton tachometer, guys, and which basically happens to be very much, you know, in our syllabus, and you know, which happens to arouse a lot of interest, guys, of the aerospace engineers, guys, and working in the industry of uh, material design and engineering optimization, guys, in order, you know, to basically know us, you know, what all after effects or what all ill effects, guys, and are basically caused by that so-called oscillation, guys, and uh, onto an uh, aircraft. You know, while it travels at insane speeds, or rather, uh, in the transonic regime, guys. So, which is why, guys, the theory of aeroelasticity and the, the theory of vibrations, guys, you know, is absolutely essential, guys, and you know, why we study study about it. And uh, obviously, guys, you know, it even deals about it even deals with the simple harmonic motion, guys, you know, which uh, happens to be denoted by y equals a into sine omega t. So, y equals uh, a into sine omega t, guys, you know, seems to be one sort of a generalized equation, guys, and for that so-called simple harmonic motion. So, guys, and while we get to uh, while we get to study the wave motion, guys, and you know, we got to uh, deal with uh, different kinds of waves, guys. Maybe the sinusoids, maybe the sawtooth wave, maybe the heavy side wave, or maybe uh, the um, I'm sorry, uh, the zigzag wave, or rather the Laplacian wave. So, uh, basically, you know, those are not the things you know, for which you know, the vibration theory and aero, uh, aerospace analysis is required. Because you know, that is certainly for sure you know, required onto those uh, on, onto those another parameters, guys. And while in fact you know, studying the so-called durability of a so-called instrument uh, of a so-called equipment, you know, which is in fact you know, used for the purpose of uh, uh, 
purpose of fabrication, uh, fa fa for the purpose of its fabrication uh, in the aerospace fuselage, and even as a constituent material, for, for, for the purpose of building of the aerospace, uh, uh, for the building of the aerospace materials. So guys, that was it for our today's video, and I've already you know, described uh, you with the types of vibrations, such as the torsional vibration, the simple vibration, uh, the longitudinal vibration, the free vibration, the forced vibration, the damped vibration, the undamped vibration, the relativistic vibration, the random vibration, the transverse vibration, and uh, even the relativistic vibration, guys. No. So that was up for our today's video and guys in case if you have not liked our channel below, uh, li liked our channel before and uh, if you are finding that uh, this so called uh, content you know really enticing guys you know then please do it and please do it and you know please even share my so called content you know with your friends you know in the engineering community and the uh, engineering community and even in the medical community medical uh, of medical science and more updates soon you know and I'll get back you know with amazing Amazing episodes, guys, about our engineering and infographics, guys, and in aerospace engineering, geothermal engineering, even about uh, obstetrics and gynecology. And see you have an amazing day. And by the way, Jai Hind and Bharat Mataki Jai and Jai Bhawani and Jai Shivaji. Bye, guys.